Hey everyone, welcome to Code. In this video, we're going to learn how to create an inference scroll using React, Express.js, and the Intersection Observer API. So here's an example of what we're going to build. It's this little thing here. And the way it works is, as we scroll to the very bottom element, we will start loading the new data. So we see we've logged now blogs 6 through 10. When we get to the bottom, we start loading the new ones again. So now we've got 15, and so on. This is what we're going to build. These blogs are going to be supplied from a custom Express API that we'll build. This won't really take long at all. And then we also are going to be making a, a use infinite a scroll custom hook. But before we get into the code and start coding this, let's talk about what an infinite scroll is. So an infinite scroll is a design that loads more content as the user scrolls through the page. It's typically used in applications that consume large amounts of data, such as Facebook or Instagram. What's useful about this is if we loaded all the data at once, it would cause an initially slow application and hence a bad user experience. But one other note I want to fill you in on is if you are using the infinite scroll for an applicate for a website that you want to implement some good SEO, I would recommend not using the infinite scroll as web crawler bots don't handle infinite scroll as well as pagination, which is basically just creating anchor refs that take you to a different page. So in my blog site, for example, I don't use the infinite scroll, even though I prefer it as a user experience. I use pagination because it's better for SEO. But either way, this is what we're going to be building. But so now let's get started building this application. And um, what we're going to build code here is just going to be the infinite scroll hook and our server API. The rest of the code, such as those blog card components, will all be available for download with the rest of this code on my website in the description. But let's start with our use infinite scroll hook. So we'll house all our infinite scroll logic inside a custom hook called use infinite scroll. This hook will manage three states and one reference. So the three states are going to be, before we do that, let's actually import all these. So we're going to import, we're going to import use state and use ref from React. And all these errors are coming from some ESLint checks. But essentially what each of these are is data is going to be the data we're loading from the API call, which in this case will be that blog information is loading is what's going to show that spinner while the API call, API call is still ongoing. Index is going to be the current set of data we are fetching. For example, index 0 will be blogs 1 through 5, index 2 will be blogs 6 through 10, and so on. And then we have a spinner ref, which is a reference to the spinner that is displayed while waiting for the data to load. But this will make more sense if we actually build our API first. So this is going to be a simple API in Express. I'm just going to take some code from a separate window and inside server here. First thing we're going to do is create our data that we'll return, which is just an array of blogs where it says the title is the blog index, and then we have a description. And we also have an increment value, which is basically how many blogs will be returned at one time. So blogs 1 through 5, blogs 6 through 10, and so on. And now let's create that actual API that returns it. Once again, I'm just going to copy and paste and go over what this is. So now if we receive a call to dash API dash blogs, we will get the index from the query or the request queries, query parameters, which is this index here, which is what we will send up. And depending on that index, we will create the range. So if it's zero, then it'll be values zero through four. If it's one, then it'll be values five through 10 and so on. And we start out at zero, of course, because this is an array and the first element is zero. But this is how we use that index to get those blogs. And then we wait three seconds to return those blogs. So when, in the beginning of the video, when we had the, actually, let me pull up a GIF demonstrating it. So when we have this spinner right here, this is waiting for this data to come back. And the reason it's taking time is we're basically mimicking a slow API with this promise. So we're waiting three seconds, which is how long that spinner's there before the data is returned. But now that we have, but now we've got this set up, let's go back to our infinite scroll. And what we want to do now is let's create a function called fetch data that will fetch the data from this API. Once again, I'm just going to copy this over and then explain it. So we have a memoized function. And actually, let's import use callback like this. But so we have a function here called fetch data, which is memoized with the use callback hook. Basically means that the reference to this function will only change when either the index or is loading changes. And we'll go over why this is memoized later. But for now, just know that what this function does is when it's called, it sets loading to true, which what that does is displays the spinner here. Then we make our request with the current index to get that range of blogs. 
So if it's one or an index is zero, we'll get blogs zero through four. If it's one, we'll get blogs five through 10, which is all handled on our server. And if we get data back, then we wanna increment the index because we've retrieved the, that index of data. And we also, of course, wanna set our data to the previous items, so the previous state before, plus the new data. If we have any errors, we'll just log those. And then no matter errors or not, we want to set is loading to false, which will hide our spinner that we have down there. Let me also close this just in case this is getting annoying. But that's all this does here. Let's minimize this. And now let's talk about the intersection observer API. So what we're going to use is, and I'll go over this API in a sec, we're going to use the intersection observer API in a use effect hook. So here's our use effect. Also import this. And essentially what all this code does here inside our use effect is determine when to fetch the data. So when to contact our API. And intersection observer API right here is a browser API that executes a function when a specific element comes into view. So we'll use this API or the intersection observer API to call our fetch data function whenever our spinner referenced by use ref is scrolled into view. So we're gonna use this API here for whenever this spinner appears that tells us to start loading more data. So when the spinner's in view, we'll call this fetch data function. And the way we do this is we use the observer API to observe our spinner or observe our spinner right here. And when that comes into view, which it'll come into view, that'll trigger this here. If the spinner is in view and we're currently not loading any data, then we wanna fetch more data. So we observe our spinner with the intersection observer API and that hooks it up to this here. And this function here will be called on whatever element is being observed. And we know that the spinner will be entries of zero or the first element being observed as it is the only thing we're observing with our intersection observer API. So is intersecting essentially means that the spinner is in view of the viewport. So if the spinner's in view and we aren't loading any data, then let's fetch more data, which is what, so this comes into view. We'll contact our API and get the next set of blogs. And finally, we just have this cleanup function for when our component unmounts, we wanna stop observing the spinner. And note that this use effect hook will be called every time a reference to this fetch data function changes because we've memoized it with use callback. And this will change whenever either the index increments or the is loading changes. So if our index increments, that means we fetch data. So then we change the function reference to fetch data, which causes this use effect hook to be fired. However, if we're still loading data, then we won't call it. We need to wait till is loading is changed too, and then we can start fetching more data. And finally, all we need to do after that is just return our data, is loading, and our spinner reference. But this is all it takes for our to get our infinite use infinite scroll hook working. Now let's work on displaying this, and we're gonna do this inside our app component. So the first thing we'll do is import our infinite scroll hook, which we have right here. And now let's get Let's work with this hook. And the way I'm gonna do that is just copy and paste some more code. So copy and paste this. We retrieve our data, our is loading state, and then our spinner reference. And then we loop through our data. And for each one of those, we create a blog card and pass it the item. What these are isn't really important. It's essentially just some a React MUI card, to, but it's really just used for display and doesn't have any real functionality with the infinite scroll. And same with the spinner, that's just another React MUI built-in component, but what's important is giving a spinner ref to this div here. So essentially, if where is loading state is true, we'll display the spinner. If not, we won't show anything. And then we apply the spinner ref to the surrounding div. So if this div comes into view, then that triggers our fetch data function here. So when this comes into view, we'll fetch more data. But this is really all it takes to use the infinite scroll. So if we go over now, let's refresh this page. We have our scroll running and we get our blogs, scroll down to the bottom. Once again, we can see our spinner and notice how the size of the scroll bar here doesn't change until we get down. And then you'll see it decrease in size because we have more data and so on. And this goes till the very end of the data. But so this is all it takes to create a use infinite scroll. Um, I won't, before the video ends, I want to note that it's actually better to, or it'll be a better user experience to load this data before the user gets to the bottom of the list. So here, we're starting to load data when we're at the bottom of the list. In a real world scenario, it might be better to observe one of these elements in the middle and start loading that data when the user gets here. 
so that it's loaded by the time they get to the bottom. But for this video, it's just easier to demonstrate use effect hook if we have this being observed at the very bottom. But this is my video on creating an infinite scroll with React. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, thank you for watching and have a good one.